Hi everybody, this is Val with Frontline Teach and I want to spend some time today talking about resistance and adherence. Uh, these are really important concepts for HIV treatment um, and they're going to understanding resistance helps to inform treatment decisions that somebody has to make um, whether they're starting, stopping, or switching HIV meds um, all of these decisions are influenced by uh, resistance. So resistance, the concept of it, starts with mutation and that sounds like a three-headed frog or something, right? That's scary. Um, but mutation is actually a natural process that happens every day um, and it means there's a new, a small change in the genes of a new creature uh, that just got born. Um, and so there are different levels of mutation, different kinds of change. So some changes are harmless or neutral changes, like a different eye color. It doesn't affect how the eye functions, it's just a different color. Um, some mutations are harmful. Um, if the new creature is missing a limb, it's not going to do what it needs to do as easily as the creature that's not missing a limb. So that would be a harmful mutation. Some mutations are helpful, like um, being bigger, being stronger, um, and so all of these are different uh, changes that a new creature can have that makes it different from its parents um, and that impacts the way that it lives in the world. Um, so mutations then get passed on to the next generation, particularly if they're helpful. Creatures who have helpful mutations live better, and then when they reproduce, some of their offspring inherit those changes. And if the changes also help that generation, the kids will pass on the changes as well. They're less likely to pass on harmful mutations than they are to pass on helpful mutations. So this process of adapting to the environment is called natural selection. Um, and this is a concept that is really important um, and that happens every day. Uh, so we talked in a different uh, slideshow about the HIV life cycle. Um, and this life cycle illustration can be found at AIDSinfonet.org, also known as the New Mexico Fact Sheets. The bottom line is that HIV has a really complicated method of reproduction and it involves HIV, the, like the HIV telling genes to photocopy HIV's RNA so that it looks like DNA and then pasting that into the CD4 nucleus so that it creates new HIVs. But a photocopy is never as good as the original document and so the so this sort of uh, thing opens up the door for HIV to have a lot of different changes um, and a particular a single HIV virion, that's the word for one virus, one virus particle, one virion can make seven to ten copies a day. There's that life cycle photo um, and you can check it out at AIDSinfonet.org if you need to see it closer up. So, okay, so we have seven to ten new HIV virions per day and because HIV is messing with its own genes, right, a lot of these new HIV are mutations. They have small changes. A lot of them are weaker. These new HIVs are weaker and they die off immediately because they have harmful changes. But others have helpful changes in their genes that allow them to live even when there's anti-HIV medication in the bloodstream. That is the virus that we call resistant virus. Um, the new HIVs that are not affected by meds are known as drug resistant virus. So the viral load increases and if someone is on meds and they have developed drug resistant virus, their viral load keeps rising and they don't get any of the benefit of meds, that is to say kicking HIV in the butt, they don't get that benefit but they have the side effects all the same. So obviously this is something that we want to keep track of. Um, and so there are a handful of things that can cause resistance um, and the number one thing is just HIV adapting to its environment and being able to reproduce. So that's natural selection. 
from mutation that happens every day. Um, Non-adherence to meds, that is not taking meds as prescribed, um, gives HIV a chance to reproduce. Um, and we're talking about not, I miss a dose every so often. Once in a blue moon, I miss a dose. We're talking about regular, consistent missing doses, um, which is to say like every weekend. Um, if somebody doesn't take their meds every weekend, I mean, I can understand that as a fellow human, but also that gives HIV some time to reproduce that it wouldn't have otherwise. Um, also, resistance can be caused from p uh, poor absorption of the medication into the bloodstream. Um, and that can be because of nutritional factors um, or sort of damage to the liver. Uh, if the liver isn't able to distribute everything where it needs to go, then the medication is one of those things that doesn't get to go everywhere it needs to go. It can also be because of drug interactions, and some drugs in the liver slow down or speed up the processing of other things that go through the liver. So drug interactions can lead to resistance. Um, initial infection, this is that the person who infected you or the person who infected someone had resistant virus. Um, uh, and then reinfection can also cause resistance and that is someone is reinfected with resistant HIV. Um, just quickly on reinfection, we use the term reinfection when someone who's living with HIV is exposed to HIV again. Um, and this can make HIV worse and potentially can make the meds stop working for someone because the, if the other person had virus that is resistant to, let's say, AZT, and you're on AZT, now this, there's a population of virus in your body potentially that doesn't care if AZT is there or not. It's going to keep reproducing. That can be a problem. Um, Technically, though, reinfection refers to an infection that you completely got rid of and then got again. So, for instance, uh, the common cold, right? If you get the common cold and you clear it and then you get, get it again, that would be reinfection. Because we never completely get rid of HIV, we reinfection is actually the wrong term to use. The technical term is superinfection, but you can understand why we don't use that. Super means on top of here. It doesn't mean the virus has superpowers, but when you say superinfection, that's what people think because of Superman. So here's just another way in which my beloved sci-fi has wrecked my career. Okay, um, not my whole career. It just it makes my job harder sometimes when the things that I love about the world outside of um, HIV get in the way of the education that I want to do about HIV. So we're saying reinfection rather than superinfection um, because the, the virus doesn't have x-ray vision. Um, it can't see ladies underpants. Um, okay. Uh, Non-adherence, that from the previous slide there or a couple back, non-adherence is really common. Um, the goal of adherence is that you take 95% of your pills exactly on time, exactly the way that they're prescribed. 95 out of 100 doses. And that's very difficult. That's a really tall order. Um, and But we know that adherence is one of our best tools in avoiding resistance. Um, so adherence keeps a steady level of medication in the system. This is called the steady state concentration. Um, when we keep the steady state concentration, HIV doesn't get a chance to reproduce and therefore it can't mutate. If it doesn't get a chance to make that photocopy of itself and make new HIV, the new it never gets a chance to have new baby HIV that have small changes. It never has mutation, so it doesn't get a chance to become resistant. The next uh, piece that we're going to do, we'll talk more about the steady state concentration, um, and then we will talk about strategies for improving adherence um, and what to do with resistant virus. Uh, so I will talk to you then.